Hyperbaric oxygen is uh, basically it's a it's a tube and it's pressurized and people go in the tube and they'll pump it up so that it's not like atmospheric air I think is what 23% oxygen or something like that. Hyperbaric they'll pump it up to 100% oxygen and they'll actually pressurize the tube so that um, you know it's higher than atmospheric pressure so that it, it, it's supposed to infuse greater than uh, if it was just at atmospheric low or low pressure environments. So hyperbarics are used for a number of different conditions and it's been used in more severe brain injuries uh, for its ability to potentially repair neural tissue or repair I know they do it for like wound healing and things like that um, so the idea is that increasing the metabolic rate by providing more oxygen in a pressurized format can increase healing and speed recovery and things like that the problem is even though there's some evidence to support it when you get into more severe brain injuries, when you get into concussion, we don't necessarily have any actual focal damage that's been done. So that might be what the issue is. I know that there's a number of clinics opening up offering hyperbaric oxygen therapy as a treatment for concussion. Uh, I think there's one here in Toronto that's called The Concussion Clinic, and it's just hyperbaric oxygen. However, the research on this for concussion specifically mild traumatic brain injuries has found that hyperbaric oxygen therapy is no better than placebo there's actually a, you know most of the time when we talk about evidence we say there's not enough evidence yet to support a certain thing in this particular case we actually have quite a bit of evidence that shows that it's not effective so there's the distinguishing thing. A lot of people will swear by hyperbaric. A lot of people will say, I did hyperbaric and it really helped me. I feel really great when I get out of it. However, the research shows that that's the placebo effect. Placebo is a very real thing, right? You can make people get better with a sugar pill if they believe that what they're getting is effective. So in terms of hyperbaric, however, when you control the trials properly, you find that it's no better than a sham or surface air. I'm going to talk about the studies on this. So there's been five or six studies that have been done on it and the only positive study that I've found had a flaw in how it was designed. So when you're doing a study, if you give somebody the intervention and you give this group no intervention, no matter what the intervention is, just by the sheer nature that you're changing something for these people over here that are getting the intervention, they will get better. That's placebo effect, potentially. Because if you're giving nothing to these people, well, nothing's changed. So they're going to not get better. So in the one study that I found that shows positive effect of hyperbaric oxygen, what they did is they gave this group, they put them in the tube, they gave them hyperbaric oxygen, this group got nothing. And guess what? This group showed benefit. This group did not. Then they crossed them over. So the group that was getting nothing now gets hyperbaric. They get better. Now the group that's no longer getting hyperbaric no longer gets better, right? Because you've now just changed things. Now are they getting better because of the hyperbaric or are they getting better because they're in this fancy tube where there's all these bells and whistles going off and they get to sit in there for an hour and the protocol, by the way, is generally an hour a day for 40 straight days. It's expensive. It's very expensive. All right, now, here's some better studies on it. Um, CIFU 2013, they had three groups, and what they did is they had 40 treatments, an hour per treatment for 40 straight days, and everybody was put into the tube. They just changed the dosage within the tube. Some people got just surface air, so they basically put them in the fancy tube, and they don't know it, but they're just breathing normal air. And there's no pressure behind it. So that's called surface air. Then they gave group, I don't have the actual groups here, but then they gave another group, um, let's say 80% oxygen at you know two atmospheric pressures. Then they gave group three 100% oxygen at three atmospheric pressures. And guess what? All three groups got better, but they didn't get better than each other. So just the mere fact of being in the tube and getting a sham treatment was beneficial. That's the placebo effect. So hyperbaric by itself, like getting 100% oxygen at three atmospheric pressures over here, was no better than just sitting in a tube and getting atmospheric normal pressure air. 
Wolf 2012 found the exact same thing. When you do a double blind randomized control trial, no significant difference on symptoms or neurocognitive performance after 30 treatments at 100% oxygen and 2.4 atmospheric pressures versus getting just a sham treatment where you're in the tube, but it's breathing normal air. Uh, another one, CFU again, 2014, same thing, no difference between sham or surface air. Dong. 2018, hyperbaric oxygen has no significant effect on PCS compared with sham treatments. So again, placebo is a big thing. And if you don't have properly controlled placebo trial, you're going to have problems, right? So a lot of people say, I did hyperbaric and I swear by it, I feel better when I get out. That is placebo taking effect because you don't have good controls. You're going in as an N of one, going into the tube, and what this study shows that they don't even have to turn the thing on and you'll feel better when you come out just because there's been some sort of intervention. So that's the problem with hyperbaric, okay? And actually what this led to is the Ontario Neurotrauma Foundation put out its most recent guidelines for persistent symptoms and they actually said with level A evidence, it is not recommended to use hyperbaric oxygen therapy to treat post-concussion symptoms. So not only is we don't know enough yet, it's actually we know enough to say that you shouldn't do it because it's not effective.